For two days, WWE stands for What A Weekend. I'm Chris Wolf with the Wrestling Vlog who always tells it like it is. matches in less than 36 hours, so let's get right to it. Start with the appetizer. Here are my picks for NXT Stand and Deliver 2023. Eight-person mixed tag match. Chase U versus The Schism. Listen, it's good that Andre Chase managed to get Tyler Bate to join them in their fight. The first and last NXT UK champ is a great talent and more than worthy heir of the title Bruiserweight. But come on, it's four on three here because Duke Hudson couldn't give any dams about the joke of a university. And no matter how committed Thea Hall is, Chase U is just not unified like Gacy and the former grizzled young vets. And the key to this match is Ava. You think there's any chance in hell that The Rock's daughter is going to lose on his, her first PLE? Doubtful. The schism will tear Chase U apart. Winners of the schism. Johnny Gargano versus Grayson Waller. It's still a shame that those from the main roster are being asked to appear on NXT to boost their image, but in this case, a one-off match is more than warranted. It was Waller that put Gargano on the injured list and then to Raw so that Waller could have a stab at the NXT title. Gargano, sadly, hasn't amounted to much since showing up on Raw, so maybe a revenge win will get him back into the limelight. If not on Raw, then at least on NXT. And maybe when Ciampa returns to Raw, Gargano can return and reignite the DIY feud or team with him to take on the tag champs. In any case, Waller is over his head here. Winner is Johnny Gargano. NXT Women's Tag Title Match. Fallon Hentley and Kiana James defend against Alba Fire and Is Isla Dawn. This whole thing with James and Henley being frenemy tag champs just isn't working for me like it did with Team Hell No or The Bar once did. James is just digging deeper and deeper into trouble as, uh, the longer she puts off what she's doing with JB and BJ. And it's only a matter of time before Henley has had enough and spills the beans herself. Time has it in right after the former Kaylee Ray and her vicious partner cleaned their clocks. They are locked in to getting the belts while the current champs are not even in the same library, let alone the same page. The fires of dawn will burn today. Winner and new champs, Abba Fire and Elsa Dawn. NXT Men's Tag Team Championship Triple Threat. Gallus versus Creed Brothers versus the Family. Take nothing against, no, nothing away from Gallus. I wanted them to be tag champs ever since they emigrated from the NXT UK. Now that they have to deal with actual brothers and two who seem as thick as brothers, well, they both deserve a shot at the titles. The Creed's for having them before, and Stax and D'Angelo for making the transition to faces after two dimes was kicked out. However, I still think Mark Coffey and Wolfgang deserve to be champs for a while longer, at least until the stigmata of sanity ebbs. Winner and still champs, Gallus. Fail five way for the North American title. Wesley defends against Dragon Lee, J.D. McDonough, Ilya Dragunov, and Axiom. Wes, Booby, I understand you want to keep proving yourself a great singles competitor since your MSK teammate ran for the hills, but these open challenges for your title seem a bit much, don't you think? And now you're content with taking on four veterans at the same time? And you don't have to even be involved in the decision to lose? Not right. You will lose. But to whom? Well, it almost seems a given that the newbie masked man could do it, but he won't. McDonough and Dragunov will be too busy with each other to matter much, which leaves a kid, a Axiom. Yeah, I think it's high time the masked Brit gets some proper recognition. Winner and new champ, Axiom. Ladder match for the NXT Women's title. Can't believe Sean was tricked by those big round goo-goo eyes. 
Roxanne Perez needs a little more rehab, I'm sure. She passed out after beating the final boss, and now she wants to be part of an even more violent match. Look, Zoe Stark's been working hard to get back in the win column. Gigi Dolan is still working on being a singles competitor, but she's getting there. Lyra Valkyria is not going to fly up to the belt because she has a tough, but she does have a toughness about her. And Indy Hartwell, come on, she's the better in the group. She more than deserves it. But no, this is a contracted champ gets hurt only to come back and win against all odds storyline. I'll be rooting for Indy, but the winner is still champ Roxanne Perez. Finally, NXT Championship match. Braun Breaker versus Carmella Hayes. It's high time. The man who's been steamrolling the competition while blindly accepting that god-awful NXT 2 stuff, and him. The two biggest names in NXT hit each other's throats in Los Angeles. As long as Street Williams, uh, as Mr. Williams keeps his schnozola out of their way, out of their business, this should be a great match. Perfect for the third one outside the Performance Center since the pandemic. And it better be the last match of the night in the former stable center before they went all woke and turned crypto. Braun strength versus Mello's tenacity. And who will turn out victorious? Well, I think it's high time Steiner's little boy breaks out of the minor leagues and shows up on the Raw after WrestleMania, which is almost always a wild time. And that means his long reign, almost all of 2022 and all of 23 so far, should end. Melo can make the money from here on, Braun. You go and break whatever's left on the main rosters. Winner and new champ, Carmelo Hayes. Okay, on to the main course. My predictions for WrestleMania 39. <laughs> Night 1, start with the showcase match, Fatal 4-Way Men's Tag Battle. If there's a match during the kickoff, chances are this will be that match. Either that or it'll be the penultimate match of the night as a palate cleanser before the main event. Whatever that may be. So essentially, these are the B-class teams looking, for, looking to get some escrow towards a title match against... Okay, well, spoilers. I'll spring that soon. But, you know, I'm, I still can't believe Braun Strowman and Rick... Ricochet are still a team. I can't believe that Alpha Academy hasn't been absorbed into the maximum male jobbers yet. I can't believe... Well, actually, there's very little uh, about the Street Profits I don't believe anymore. But mostly, I can't believe the Viking Raiders need another push. Get the bats on their shoulders already! Winners of the Viking Raiders. Seth... Frickin' Rollins versus Logan Paul. Logan said that his contract with the WWE will soon expire, to which I say, good riddance. Logan is the Andy Kaufman of the WWE. He doesn't need to wrestle to be popular, he just does it for more likes, shares, and subscribes. Now don't get me wrong, he surprised the hell out of me last WrestleMania and proved he could hold his own against the champ at Crown Jewel. That being said, we don't need a full-time YouTube influencer as a seriously part-time superstar. That's what The Miz is likely to be soon. Not that Seth Rollins' angle isn't starting to wear on me, in my opinion, but as long as the auto masses sing his aria, he'll be a big-time competitor, while Logan will remain like Brock Lesnar. Wasted talent. Winner is Seth frickin' Rollins. Trish Stratus and WWE Women's Tag Champs Becky Lynch and Lita versus Damage Control. I still don't get why Lynch had decided to go old school to get back at Bailey and Kai and Sky. Was there no other woman on the Raw roster who wanted to slap the taste out of their mouths? Now the recent rival show concerning Lita versus Stratus has people believing that the two Hall of Famers will come to blows and cost them the match. And while that is a viable solution, I just think the relative youth of damage control will lead them to victory. And on Monday, I'm thinking Kai and Sky will regain the belts and send Lita and Trish back to the Legends bracket. Winners are damage control. Rey Mysterio versus Dominic Mysterio. Chances are great that the rest of the Judgment Day will be at ringside for this. 
which means that the newly reformed Latino World Order, aka Legado del Fantasma, will be there to counter them. Plus, it doesn't look like my prediction about Ray's future has any credence, partly due to the LWO, but mostly because Ray's on the poster for WrestleMania Backlash at the end of the month. But you know, whether or not this is his last bow, Ray is going to beat some sense into his son, and he needs it. He begs Ray for weeks to hit him. He finally does. Then he screams, what kind of father he hits his son? Guess what, Dom? Mine did. And it made me a better person as I got older. Winner is Ray Mysterio. SmackDown Women's Championship, Charlotte Flair versus Ray Ripley. Rick's Little Queen has not been seen much lately. More importantly, she hasn't been competing in front of the cameras too often. But I keep saying it, if Charlotte wants to top Pop's record for title reigns, she has to lose that belt a few more times. And Ray Ripley would be a viable candidate. She's proven herself time and again, albeit with help from the Judgment Day lately, just how tough a woman she is. Plus, she's been active all this time. Flair might have a bit of ring rust to go with the sequins on her robe. Sorry, Sh Charlie. The good news is you can still win two more times to tie your dad. Winner and new champ, Ray Ripley. Undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship match. Usos versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Much like seeing Kevin and McCormick die time and again on South Park, it's not like we didn't see this coming a light year away. It was only a matter of time before KO and SZ became Thunder Buddies again and bring some Canadian justice to KO Zania. And don't think for a second that Jimmy and Jay didn't think about what was said to them on SmackDown. If they lose, they are going to get more than an earful about it from Roman Reigns. Not that the crowd at SoFi Stadium won't give them an earful anyway with the cheers for their opponents. It'll be a tough match, no doubt, but somehow, Kevin and Sammy will prevail. And if there's any smarts left in the writing room, they will be given truly unified titles on Raw afterwards. Winners and new champs, Owens and Zayn. Finally for night one, Austin Theory defends the United States Championship against John Cena. I guess Theory is still pissed about being thought of as a petulant heel who's never beaten anyone important. I think of him as a petulant heel who twisted around the rules of money in the bank contract because there was no way in hell he could beat Roman Reigns. But John Peacemaker Cena? He's just plain petulant. He does not need the WWE, and the WWE certainly doesn't need him anymore. He just wants to try and add more star power to a card that really doesn't need it. Not to say Cena won't give Theory a masterclass in thugonomics and maybe even hit an AA on him, but these days it's not enough. Theory will kick out, find a way to cheat, and give an A-Town down to make Cena 0-3 at WrestleMania over the last five years. Winner and still champ, Austin Theory. Night 2, Women's Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Showcase. If this is the best that WWE can get for women's tag teams, maybe whoever wins on Night 1 should just trash the titles. This will be a short and not-so-sweet match as true talent is wasted in a vague attempt to see who should be the next challengers. Liv Morgan and Raquel Arrigas are holding each other down, Shotzi is holding Natalia down in her last-ditch effort, though I do like the way that their take on the heart attack. And Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville? They don't need help, because the bitching holds them both down anyway. Add the fact that one team didn't even have to fight to qualify for this, and the winners are clear. They is, are, and will be Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. Brock Lesnar versus Omas. Talk about wasted talent. Oh, no, 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 not Lesnar. He hasn't competed enough in the ring to waste his waning talent, but Omas was somebody. He single-handedly decimated the New Day to win tag gold for him and AJ Styles just two years ago. And last year, he was whomped in record time by Bobby Lashley, and 
He had to resort to being MVP's great Nigerian hope. Omas is a one-trick pony, sadly. He's big, he's tall, he's ruthless, and he squashes little guys with zero effort. At least at Lesnar adds a little variety to that in his personality. He knows he's the toughest badass, but he's not afraid to prove it by taking on stronger opponents, like the ones Omas had difficulty with. This may be a short match, too, all the better to make time for the bigger matches. But Omas will slip again to a brute of a man. Winner is Brock Lesnar. Hell in a Cell match. Edge versus Finn Balor. Wikipedia says that Finn will bring the demon back for this match, but he doesn't really need to. He's already beaten the hell out of everyone without it, and with the Judgment Day by his side. Whether Damien Priest will be there to help However, he can is still a mystery. Edge has been 2-1 and one at WrestleMania since returning. Beat Randy Orton at 36, lost a triple threat for the Universal title at 37, beat Styles at 38. In that same time, Balor didn't compete. Not even in the population zero one three years ago. If Balor wants to get the WrestleMania rust off of him quickly, he may have to channel the demon even if he doesn't come to the ring looking like it. All I can say is that if Edge doesn't get some sort of title match after this one, he should just re-retire because he ain't getting another chance. Winner is Edge. Raw Women's Championship match. Bianca Belair defends against Asuka. By this time, I think it's safe to say that everyone's ready for Asuka. Not that her career hasn't... Hasn't made a shift thanks to her face paint and her great kabuki mist spraying, but from the looks of things, Asuka is still a face, well liked by the fans. If she does try that on the EST of the WWE, expect the crowd to turn very quickly. I'm probably thinking that will be after the match, though. Either Asuka will do it after losing to express her anger, or after winning to quite literally rub Belair's face in it. I think the latter, because while I'm glad Belair's held the belt for nearly a year straight, I think it is time for new blood, or in this case, Mist, to take over. Winner and new champ, Asuka. Triple threat for the Intercontinental Championship, Gunther versus Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus. What is it with Sheamus and tag teams? Last time he was part of one, it was with a bit bitter enemy, and that he made it work. Now he made another work and now turned on his partner into a bitter enemy. So what happens when a Brit, a Scot, and an Irishman walk into a ring? All hell breaks loose, that's what. Not to worry about the Brutes and Imperium, they'll cancel each other out like last time. Not that it would matter as this is an OTQ match. McIntyre and Sheamus may have a common enemy in the former UK champ, but the chances of them working together will be few and far between. Really, Gunther just needs to wait for the dust to settle between the so-called banger bros, let them trade bro, kick, or claymore, and pin one of the exhausted challengers. It'll be more involved with that, I'm sure, but winner and still champ is Gunther. Finally, the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. As soon as Rhodes appeared in the Royal Rumble, I knew damn well it would come to this. <clears throat> Sorry, the next two months played out just as expected. Rhodes competing to show how he's recovered and that he was ready to finish the story. And Reigns pondering how to take out Dusty's baby boy with the help of his bloodline. But Roman will be down to just Sola Sokoa and his wise man after the Usos fail him. And since we know Sokoa finally lost two Rhodes, that's not much incentive. Not that Roman needs Solo since he's been defending the title, well, Solo, in most of his matches. He's had the longest primary title reign in WWE since Hulk Hogan had for four years in the 80s. But word is Reigns has taken a sabbatical after this match, and that means the Roman Empire must finally fall. My guess? The ref will be knocked out, Sokoa will go for a Samoan spike, along with a spear by Roman, but then the Usos come out and formally resign by d going one and done on their tribal chief. This will allow Cody to take Roman out 
and the revived ref will make the three count. Winner and new champ, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Oh, and he'll get to use that new belt they made just for him as the belts are truly united. <sighs> Those are my picks. Have a good weekend. I'm Chris Wall with the Wrestling Vlog who always tells it like it is. Stay safe, pray for peace, and I'll see ya!